Hello Photographers, direct support for these videos comes from sales of my video courses or the use of my affiliate links, all of which can be found down in the description. Today I want to show you the best video settings for your Sony a7 III. Now before we get started, I do want to point out that video is a complex thing and this is meant to get you started. There's a lot you can do with your video settings, but this is a really great place to start. Now the very first thing you need to do is put your camera in video mode. I have my camera right now in manual mode and you wanna flip it over to this little film strip icon which is the movie mode. And once we're in movie mode, that's going to unlock the movie settings in the menu system that we want to use. So to get into the menu system, I'm gonna hit the menu button on the back of the camera and we wanna be on camera menu two, which is this purple camera up at the top here. Now, if you're not there, you can just use the back up button to move all the way up to the top and then you can use the left and right buttons to cycle through these menu options. And on camera menu two, we wanna start on page one with the exposure mode. By default, the camera is set to program all for your video recording, which means the camera has control over your exposure. If you want that, that's fine, but generally speaking, we're looking for control over the camera, which means we wanna press the center button on the back and put this into manual mode so we have full control over the exposure. Once that's set, we're gonna go back into the menu and we wanna now look at the file format. The file format determines the resolution of the video you're going to capture in, and the options we're concerned with here are the XAVCS options, the 4K and the HD. The HD option is the default and it's 1920 by 1080, that standard high definition footage. And then the other option is 4K, which is 3840 by 2160. Now you might be thinking, great, I wanna record 4K footage, but think about it for a minute. Recording, storing, and editing 4K footage is computationally intense. And if you don't have a device, a computer, with the hard drive space and the processing power to handle that 4K footage, you might find yourself in a bit of trouble. So consider that before you jump into recording 4K footage. I typically record in 4K, but I'm gonna put it in HD so that you can actually see the menus while I'm changing things. So we're gonna choose HD, and then we're gonna go down and take a look at the record setting. Now this governs two different things, the frame rate and the bit rate. So first we're gonna take a look at the frame rate by going into the menu and looking at the options. The frame rates are the numbers with the P after it, the 60P, the 30 the 24p and the 120p. This is how many frames per second or pictures per second the camera will create with your footage. And generally speaking, you should choose between one of two options, either 24p or 30p. If you want the cinematic look, 24p is the way to go. That is your standard cinema frame rate. And if you don't really care and you just want like the standard YouTube look, then you can go with 30p. Now you notice there's only one 24p, but there's two 30p options. And that's because we have some different bit rates to choose from. Now the bit rate is the actual quality of the pictures that are taken for the video. And the higher the bit rate, the better the quality. But the caveat to that is the higher the bit rate, the bigger the video file. Just like with 4K, you get great big video files. Well, with higher bit rates, you also get big video files. So this is always a balancing act between the quality you wanna get and your ability to manage and edit those video files. So if you want 24p, your only option is 50 megabytes per second. And if you want 30p, then you can choose 16 megabytes per second, which is a lower bit rate, which will give you smaller, more manageable video files. Or if you want that higher quality and can handle it, then the 50 megabytes per second. You can also use 60p or you have some 120p options for recording slow-mo footage as well. Now we're gonna move on to the next page of the menu and we're gonna take a look at the AF drive speed. This dictates how quickly the camera refocuses if the subject moves in the scene. Just as I'm moving the scene, I don't have a camera that refocuses on me, but the Sony a7 can. And if you want it to quickly refocus on your subject, then you're gonna to wanna to go into here and change this from normal to fast. Now, after that, we also wanna take a look at the tracking sensitivity. And that is something that I like to set to responsive just to make sure that the camera will recognize the subject moving quicker and focus on it faster. So once we go out of that, we wanna take a look at the audio recording. This is by default set to on. If you don't want to record audio with your video, you can turn that off, but I don't recommend doing that. Leave that on. 
And when recording video, you want to set your audio levels. So you do that here. Now, the thing about audio levels is it's not something that you set as one and done, like you might do with your frame rate and your bit rate. Rather, this is something you set video to video as the situation changes to make sure you're getting good quality audio every single time. So what you do is you go into here and you have this little graph. You see those green lines that are bouncing? That's an indicator of the current audio level. And then up top, you have the actual setting. Now you can change that setting by spinning the rear control dial to the left or to the right. And watch what happens when I turn this up all the way. Do you see how those green lines start popping up now at the minus three and close to the zero dB rating? That's high and you generally don't want it that high. Generally speaking, where you want your audio is somewhere around the minus 12 to minus six area. So for me, talking as I am now, I would probably set this to a level 12 because that's keeping my peaks at around minus 12. Now, when you have that set, you also want to be able to monitor that while you're recording. So we're gonna go back into the menu system and we're going to turn the audio level display on. Now, when you turn that on, it doesn't show up by default on the screen. You may have to cycle through your display options by pressing the display button on the back of the camera. Right now I have this basic clean display, but if I press the button once, you can see the audio levels and a histogram come up on the screen. And you can press this button several times to cycle through the different display options for your camera. Now back into the menu system, we're gonna move over to the next page. And the next thing I'd recommend you change is this movie with shutter button option. By default, you can only start video by pressing the red record button on the back of the camera. But I like to also be able to use my shutter button to start video when I'm in movie mode. So all you gotta do is go in here and turn that from off to on. And when you do, you can now use your shutter button to start video as well as the record button on the back of the camera. Over on the next page, I wanna point out your steady shot, which is your in-body image stabilization. This is on by default but it is definitely something you want on when you're recording video, especially if you're hand holding, because that can really help smooth out your footage. And then finally, the last thing I wanna mention is custom buttons, because I mentioned you wanna change your audio levels for every single video you shoot to make sure that you have good quality audio every single time. Well, going into the menu to that option is kind of a pain in the butt. So what's nice to do is to assign the audio levels to a custom button on the camera. So you can just hit that button when you're in movie mode and go directly to that setting. So if we go over to page eight of this menu set, we have the custom keys and we want custom key for video. By default, all of these are set to follow whatever your custom keys are for photo, but you can set these independently for video. So what I'm going to do is scroll down using the rear control dial until we get to custom button four, which is your trash button on the back of the camera. And I'm gonna set that to the audio levels. What you do is press the center button to go in there, and then you just cycle through the pages until you find the setting that you want for that particular button. And now with that set, when you are at your regular shooting screen, you can press that custom button and it brings you directly to that option. So these are the best settings to get started shooting video with your Sony a7 III. If you have questions about any of this, let me know down in the comments. If you wanna do some of that YouTube bullshit to help me out, like, subscribe, whatever, that's great, but make sure you take some damn photos.